Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do. It is going to be a chatty get ready with me on this look right here and trying some new makeup. This is a very girls night-esque style video. I have new products from Lawless Beauty, shout out to Annie Lawless. New products are from my girls, Natasha and Charlotte Tilbury, hey hey. And also Rare Beauty, what's up Selena Gomez, welcome to girls night. And uh, I do want to say before we get started, I am going to be discussing some harder topics in here, I'm kind of focusing on my divorce, my mental health, how I'm doing, a little bit of a life update. I took some time off. Um, I haven't uploaded a video since last week, Friday, so it has been a week of no uploads from me. Um, I went dark for a couple days on social media as I tried to uh, just tried to work through some things. So did want to mention that in the beginning of this video. Um, it does get pretty emotional in some parts, so just wanted to give that warning, but there's really some topics that I wanted to share and discuss and then also give a little bit of a life update and how I am doing as we play with some new makeup from my girlfriends. So let's go ahead and get started. Hello, all right. Let's begin. I'm gonna start off with my face. So I got some new products in from Lawless Beauty. One of them being this new foundation. This is the Conceal the Deal Long Wear Full Coverage Foundation. I got a couple different shades sent over in PR. I grabbed out Fawn. Is that right? Yes, I'm going with Fawn, which is medium with light golden undertones. I'm typically more neutral or cool, uh, but the other ones that were more in the neutral category were really, really light, and um, this one is more medium, so we're just gonna try it. It might not be the best shade match, but it's supposed to be, it's supposed to apply like a serum, but then like dry down to a full coverage foundation, so I'm kind of curious, and again, I don't know if the shade matching will be the best, but we shall see. This retails for $39. I am gonna use the brush that they sent along also, the foundation brush. Since again, it is like you really do want to shake it when I was doing some swatching earlier to see what shade to use. It is very, very liquidy. Uh, so it comes in a squeeze tube like this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to the brush here and then we will see what we think. I used my First Aid Beauty Coconut Skin Smoothing Primer. I use that a lot when testing out uh, new foundations. I didn't see, I'm gonna use the brush to buff this out. Oh, so that is interesting because it really does come out very liquidy, but I can tell right away. Oh, I can tell right away that this has a lot of coverage. Okay, interesting. Um, I'm typically, you know, I like a little bit more of a lighter coverage. I think this is still gonna be pretty light on me. I like more of a lighter coverage, you know, I was really into the skin tints and light coverage foundations, but we'll see. Okay. Hmm. I don't feel like it's really blending into my skin right now. I feel like it's just kind of sitting on top. Like it's like not what's going on here. It's like not blending on my nose even a little bit. Okay. I've tried, I, I like a lot from Lawless Beauty. I buy a lot from, from Lawless. Um, their foundation in the past, I did not like. And it's not, <laughs> so far it's not looking super smooth for this one either. Like if you can see, I just feel like it's not blending very well. It's just kind of sitting on my skin. And it just, I mean, it just looks like I have a layer of foundation on my skin. Um, and the shade is pretty light for me. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to decide what to do if I want to, like, actually wear, I mean, I do have plans tonight. I'm filming this on Thursday, and it's NFL kickoff, so I'm planning to just watch the game with some people at the complex here. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep this on or test it out a different day. I'm gonna get a damp sponge actually and go over it with a damp sponge and see how I feel. Just coming in with a damp sponge can help a little bit or to help like sheer it out a little bit. I'm also gonna experiment here. I just put a drop of my Drunk Elephant Deep Bronzy. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. This could go well, this could go terrible. <laughs> I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? Um, but it's just, it's so light, I like, I can't take myself seriously at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna do this and blend it out and see what we think. 
and if I absolutely hate it, I'm just gonna take it off and we'll start over, but I don't know, I just, I, I can tell that it seems more full coverage, and that's just also, I'm not really a fan of that, and then the shade match isn't really working out, and it's like, hmm, if I was just sitting here at my house all day, I wouldn't care, but, hmm. So the debronzy, I never know why I panic with the debronzy. It's just so easy to blend into anything. Usually I just mix it directly with the foundation, but I really thought that one wouldn't be so light on me. But, um, you know, I think that's it. I think the sponge helps a little bit. You know, typically with something that's more full coverage, I do like to use a sponge because the, the moisture can help sheer, you know, sheer out the foundation just a little bit. So maybe it's not as heavy. Uh, but I just I wanted to use that brush that it came with but this is okay We'll see. I mean, we'll see how it goes throughout the day Like I'm, I'm not again. I'm just I'm not a huge fan of full coverage foundations, but I like to try I like to try new things you never know and I was very curious with the whole serum like aspect like I, I was like I wonder how full coverage it's really gonna be but I could tell right away That it's a lot and you know, I probably also used too much once again, shake well, it's gonna come out really fast. So we'll see how it actually, you know, dries down and then wears throughout the day. It really did cover well, cause you know, I do have redness. I mean, that covered, that covered really well. Um, okay. I feel like I have a lot of conflicting thoughts cause in the beginning I was like, I'm about to take this off. And now I'm like, that's really, that's, that's not bad. So let's just keep going though, because some, sometimes my opinions can change from the beginning to the end of doing my makeup, so let's keep it rolling. I'm just gonna use my Power Fabric Concealer. So, a reason why I wanted to do this Get Ready With Me was to just give a little bit of an update on how I'm doing, especially handling the divorce. I did take some time off this week. I missed a Will I Buy It video on Wednesday, which is very, very rare for me. I think I've only missed one other one in all of my years of of doing the Will I Buy It series. Like, I really don't even feel like I have to cover too much because that foundation really did a lot. So, okay, all right. But I did need to take some time off this week. Um, Tuesday the 7th would have been my eight year wedding anniversary. And I was just having a hard time. I actually did film a video yesterday. I'm not exactly sure of the order things are gonna go up. Um, so I'm not sure if this one is up first or if the other one is up first, but even in the other one, which is just my, my makeup monthly, my, my ranking, when I tried to talk about like taking some time off and, and, you know, saying thank you for, for supporting, I couldn't get through it without crying. And I was like, well, there's no chance I can sit down and do a full get ready with me update. I'm going to cry the entire time. So that showed me that I wasn't quite ready to have the full discussion of what I was wanting to discuss in today's video. So I decided to just take a small piece of what I was going to talk about and discuss that instead. And a big part of what that was is going through something like a divorce in the public eye and how challenging that can be. It's been interesting being an influencer for so many years. I started as a blogger in 09 and to see what the industry is like and how it's changed so much and to see how influencers are now perceived and looked at and how we're treated. There's an expectation when you're an influencer to share part of your life online. It's always been that way. When, when we started as bloggers, back in the day, back when blogging was first becoming a thing, that was kind of the point of it. You were, you were sharing your life, you were sharing your experiences, you were sharing your photos, you were sharing your recipes, you were sharing your workouts, you were sharing the books you were reading. That's what we were doing, we were, we were sharing our lives. And then it just kind of evolved and escalated to not only do we have expectations to share parts of our lives, but we now just have to be willing to accept the amount of hate and pressure and intensity that comes with being an influencer and sharing our lives online. I don't really know anything different at this point. I started blogging when I was, what, 22 or 23 years old. And even prior to that, I had, I had been sharing my life with 
a public audience. I, I used to do speeches. I, I, I gave speeches on what it was like to be a sexual abuse survivor and how I got through that and all of these different other things that happened to me in life. And I would speak at schools and I, I, I loved doing that. And I would write articles and they would be published. So I've been sharing my life for as long as I can remember. It is what I know. To make it a career has been such a crazy adventure, a crazy experience with highs and lows, but the lows can be incredibly scary. And some of the lows that I have experienced while going through something like a divorce in the public eye has really scared me at times. The things that I have seen people say about me online, the speculation I have seen about my divorce online is quite disturbing. And I've talked to quite a few influencers as of recently about how we feel when people attack us so personally and they attack our families um, or attack ourselves and how we deal with that. I watched Hannah's video about why she almost left YouTube and her struggles with her mental health and trying to get help and the scary situation that she went through. Cyberbullying has always been something that I have talked about. I, I've, I've talked about it before I had a YouTube platform. I've talked about it back in my blogging days because even back then it wasn't as prevalent. It wasn't as deep. It wasn't as scary as it is now, but it's really got taken to new levels and the comfortability that people have behind their screens to say things to real humans, no matter if we're influencers, no matter if we're celebrities, no matter if we're athletes, we are all humans and the things that other humans feel comfortable saying to people online these days is quite alarming quite honestly i feel like what's the point so many of us talk about mental health so many of us talk about struggles so many of us talk about cyberbullying yet we see it every single day and there's people who truly just get off on being mean that's what brings them joy that's what they think is funny so i thought should I really sit down and have this conversation and feel like maybe it's going in one ear and out the other? But maybe one person will get it. Maybe one person will be like, you know what? Yeah, maybe it's bringing, being a part of these crazy rumors about people that I don't even know. Maybe I shouldn't do that anymore. Maybe I shouldn't get on Reddit and speculate about other people and what's wrong with them and what's wrong with their marriage. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Gotta give it a try, right? Gotta give it a try. I'm gonna set up with Charlotte Tilbury. I knew that going through my divorce was going to be challenging. Not just because going through divorce is challenging. And it truly feels like a death sometimes. And I lost my best friend of 15 years. And at some point, I straight up lost myself. I put everything into trying to save my marriage. Everything. I gave up parts of me that I thought I would never give up. I dealt with things I never thought that I would deal with. I tried things I never thought I would try. Because when I got married, I took that seriously. I wanted to be married forever. Mitch was my best friend since I was 19 years old. We grew up together. His family was my family. I lost family. And it hurts. And it sucks. And when you know how hard you tried and you know the things that you did and the extremes that you went through, to then go online and read the most ridiculous rumors and speculation about yourself that cuts down everything that I went through. Everything that I went through. One sentence that someone just makes up, oh, I bet they got divorced because of this reason. Then other people start saying, yeah, I bet so too. And yeah, that makes sense. And it destroys, it destroyed me to read stuff like that. 
because then it started to make me question maybe I didn't do enough maybe I could have done more I couldn't and people don't understand what you are doing when you put stuff out there like that on the internet and you think that we're not gonna see it or worse you want us to see it it is so detrimental to one's mental health to have to read that kind of stuff about them but also to know that other people are reading that stuff about them that my family is reading that about me that my friends are reading that about me that my nieces and nephews can google my name and find i bet samantha march got divorced because of this reason and then they have to wonder is that why she got divorced i wonder what it's such a horrible feeling and one thing that i said to my family at one point was not only was I struggling with a broken heart but I'm dealing with a broken spirit and to have a broken heart and a broken spirit simultaneously is very scary and the lowest of lows I've had my heart broken before I've had my spirit broken before I don't think I've ever had the two happen at one time and it's scary and like I said I knew it was gonna happen I knew people would be speculating I knew people would be talking I knew there would be reddit threads about me I warned my family ahead of time you're gonna start reading stuff about me you're gonna start seeing stuff about me we all knew that that was going to happen because for whatever reason, when you put yourself in the public eye, you just have to then accept the fact that you're an animal at the zoo and people just watch you and then get to say things about you and then go about their day. Like it, it's just, it's, it's such a weird thing what we do. And you know, I, I, I didn't become a blogger because I wanted to someday be YouTube famous or Instagram famous or have a follow like I just wanted to blog about books I was reading and workouts I was doing and that was it and then you know the career kind of transitioned from there and sometimes I'm like man if I wanted to get into this industry today would I and quite honestly I don't know if I would because it's, it's, it's not that it's just, it's hard at times, but I, I, I wish people could understand mentally what this career does for you. And you hear celebrities talk about it. And you know, a lot of celebrities have very, very extreme stories about like what they deal with, but it's hard to read stuff about you. It just genuinely is. And another point of that is it's hard to know that other people are reading that kind of stuff about you. And it's hard to know when it's just a bold-faced lie. Like, so many things I've seen about my divorce online, it's just a straight-up lie. It's just a straight-up speculation, assumption, not even close to the truth. And it's just so ridiculous. And it's just frustrating to me because I'm a pretty straight shooter. I, I'm, I, like, I like to think of myself as a very truthful person. But I'm someone who gets really, really upset when I know that someone is lying. Because I'm just like... Why are you doing that? Like what? I don't understand. When I see people make up lies about me on the internet and then other people chime in and then it's just like a circle of lies, it's nothing is more frustrating to me. And you just want to start screaming the truth. But at the same time, you also want to protect yourself in different ways and keep some things private and, and all of that. So it's just kind of, it's such a hard, such a hard situation. So it's interesting and it's a question that I like I kind of want to ask other influencers that started before this was a thing before this was a career before this was an industry before we had managers before we had lawyers before we had teams like and I just want to ask them like if you were to get into this now like would you would you get into it knowing what you know so I did set my face with my Dior powder no powder and then I did my brows I just used the persona cosmetics swipe up uh, like brow gel brow tint uh, that was my first time using it uh, and I don't know I think I I feel like this brow looks better than this brow but this brow is my bad brow, bad brow, bad brow. not the best at that I'm, I'm mostly just better at, at just a brow pencil but I really wanted to try it I use the shade brown I think it's okay I think it's okay and then I'm going to use this beautiful palette here from Charlotte Tilbury 
Got a really nice package from Shar Shar recently. This is the Nudegasm Face Palette. So this is what it looks like. And then we have a blush, highlighter, contour, and bronzer. I'm gonna be using some of the Sigma and Beauty Bird uh, brushes. I did also wanna say a quick thank you. My uh, collab with Sigma has sold out, actually, the day that I'm filming this. I just found out a couple hours ago that um, my favorite set with a Sigma, I have the box right next to me, of course. Um, this one has sold out. So I know the email said that we could work on a restock. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. But thank you to anyone who supported that collab. It's, that was so crazy. I was actually on my way to the gym and I got the email and I was like, okay um, so thank you so much for supporting it and yes i hope that we can bring back the uh the restock here so i'm going to take a break on heavier topics just to you know try to lighten the mood a little bit um and we're just going to focus on the nude gasm palette so i'm first going to go in with the contour shade and use the dream powder perfecter so i did a pr haul recently on my instagram i try to do some instagram lives uh, from time to time. So if you like live chats, it's a good place to find me. So I did a little PR haul over there. And when I mentioned this palette, someone asked if there was different, uh, you know, different palettes for different skin tones. And I believe, I think I'm saying this correctly, that this is the only one. And I do wish that Charlotte would start to expand that a little bit more. A lot of times when she comes out with products like this, it's only one shade and it can really only fit you know a handful of people so i do think expanding would be perfect um because even this contour i feel like this is pretty it's pretty light on me so i'm just trying to get that like in the hollows of my cheekbones here but you know really kind of building building that one up i'm gonna do a little bit on my nose and then i'm gonna use a bronzer brush in the bronzer shade Okay. I definitely feel like I need to do quite a bit of bra. Perry's always like coming out of the back of my head. Uh, Perry, I never know what you're doing. So I do feel like I need to bronze quite a bit because that, like I said, that foundation shade is a bit lighter. Next time that I use it, I think I'm just going to mix the deep bronzy right in. I really don't notice the deep bronzy like changing a foundation all that much. Um, so I think that I would still be able to test it out. I just, if I could have worn it by itself that's kind of what i would prefer for the first time but i really wouldn't be able to take myself seriously if i only had such a light foundation shade on especially because my body is so much tanner than my face so Oof. that bronzer is really pretty Ooh, i like that okay i'm starting to go heavy i'm starting to go heavy on the bronzer no one should be shocked and then this blush right here and using the blush brush this looks like to have a nice little shimmer to it so i'm just gonna pop this on okay it's very glowy and beautiful mm. this is kind of more of like a peachy champagne mm -mm. that's pretty charlotte complexion products man they can really i just feel like they're so like naturally effortlessly beautiful kind of thing there is a highlight in there but i usually do my highlight at the end um so i'm gonna move to my eyes next but i am gonna spray my face so lawless did also come out with their glam guard their long wear setting spray i've used this a couple times so far because i do like to test out setting sprays so far so good i don't have like a full full review yet but I feel like it's helped keep my makeup on nicely, um, especially, you know, it's hot outside. It's like 108 degrees here. Definitely like to keep my makeup uh, wearing all day long. And then for my eyes, I'm so excited because I'm going to use the Natasha Denona Retro Palette. So I originally had a different video idea in mind for the Retro Palette. I was going to do a full breakdown of the palette and three different looks and comparing all these different eyeshadow palettes. And then my palette got extremely delayed. I was supposed to get it on a Friday. Uh, then it got pushed to Saturday. Then it got pushed to, we don't know, it's just going to show up at some point. And it came at like 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. And I was like, well. And, you know, there's already a lot of videos out there about the palette. So I figured mine would kind of just get like lost in the sea. So I figured, you know, let's sit down and do the get ready with me. Then I ended up taking a break. And I thought maybe my first video back should be a little bit of more of just like a chatty style video. So that's what we decided to do. But 
Um, I do have another look on my Instagram. Again, March Beauty Word, if you want to see another look with this palette. And I went really light tones. Um, I used like glitz and psychedelic, you know, they're so beautiful. Nude mauve, which obviously is just like a favorite shade, Andy. And then I think for today, I want to try to do something a little bit darker. I really like this palette. Like, I love the colors of this palette. I love that it's so romantic and very feminine with these pinks and the purples, but then there's also some of these darker shades. I feel like it makes a really beautiful romantic fall palette. Like I think, fall, I truly think fall when I look at this palette and some of these deeper tones are so gorgeous. I also really love how many different looks I want to do with this palette. Like when I look at this, I'm just so inspired to put so many different shades together. I'm just, this, I, yeah the moment that i saw this i was like this is this is a samantha palette for sure so first up i'm going to take the detailed blending brush and i'm going to grab a little bit of amara here in the corner and then i am going to pack this on the outer part of my lid like so a lot of you know i love the natasha palettes the midi sizes are just like my jam these are 65 dollars but these tones in here, again, I love that it looked like fall at the same time. Like I, oh, and when I was swatching this palette, I was like drooling. Like the mattes are so buttery, so smooth. The shimmers are just beautiful. I love Natasha Denona. I had a, a girl from the complex here at dinner the other night. She was like, I wanted to ask you, what do you think of Natasha Denona palettes? And I was like, well, let me tell you. I'll tell you about them. You want me to tell you about them? Do you want me to rank my palettes for you? Uh, you should buy it and Natasha should know the palette. Like, I just was like going off. I was like, what's, what's your favorite colors? Like, this would be a good one for, like, I got, re she was probably like, oh, 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 I didn't know you were gonna get that excited. I was like, no, no, I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So I'm just packing this one on the outer part of my lid. I'm already obsessed with this color. Like, this is so gorgeous, stop. You could just put this all over the eye and blend it out a little bit in the crease with green eyes. She, <sighs> Telling ya. Gorge. All right, then I'm going to grab the fluffy blend. I'm trying to decide what I want. I can't, I, my eyes keep going to go-go. I'm just going to do it. We're just going to try go-go. Honestly, like I feel like I could do anything with this palette you could do so many different color combinations it's crazy so i am going to lightly run that back and forth in my crease just adding in a little bit of omara back because i really want to keep this like darker jewel tone on the outer part and i'm going to do some of swing and this is the fluffy shader and I'm gonna pack Swing onto the lid. See, this is a dry brush and that shade is already, like I was thinking the shade since it has more of like a sheen to it. I was like, oh, but it probably won't pop too much, you know? And then I, I'll like layer and like, it'll be fine, no. Like then it's like, nope, you're working with, like look at that. Like you're working with Natasha Denona. Like this, this, yep, just beautiful. So freaking easy to work with these eyeshadows. It's crazy. Oh, I'm just. Ah! Ah! I'm not gonna take ex any extra product. I'm just gonna do another blend here. Oh, that what was that shade called? Swing. Ooh. Mm. Mm. It's like I was gonna. I, my plan has been to add like a topper shade over it, and I'm like, do I want to? Like that's just. It's so. I really enjoy what I have going on here right now. Hmm. I'm gonna add, I'm just gonna do a little bit more Amara on the auto parts here. Just a little bit, just a touch. Yeah, I'm gonna drag that shade like a little bit into the crease too, just to make the crease almost like a little bit smokier. I have been, I've been paying no attention to where I'm at in regards to the camera, so that's good. Hope you've really been catching all this because uh, honestly, who knows? The palette could have been in front of my face, in front of my eyes this whole time. Oh! Living, breathing, loving, laughing. <sighs> I was sitting here trying to decide if I wanted to do one of the shimmers, but honestly, like, I love, I love this. 
I love this right now. So I just added some Milk Bonus liner to my waterline and I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna add some groove. I'm gonna use a Sigma E30 pencil brush and I'm just gonna put this pretty close to the lash line. There's Aries. <laughs> And mostly focusing it on the outer part and then same brush I'm gonna add in go go that second shade that I use to blend out and I'm gonna do this a little bit lower and then start to smoke those shadows together then I think I'm gonna do a little bit of Vivian and just kind of tap this on the inner part of my eye just for a little something a little brow bone a little inner corner Nothing too much. I was gonna do one of the more shimmery shades, but I think this will be good. I really like this eye look because I feel like it's kind of like sunset -y vibes. Loving that. So for my mascara, I'm gonna use the one from Rare Beauty. This is their, I don't know, it just says black mascara. I'm gonna use their black mascara. Looks like so. It's gonna be my first time trying it out, so let's see. All right, so this is one coat. I'm gonna do two coats, one coat. Hmm, well, that's not bad. All right, so here is two coats. It's definitely very uh, volumizing. I mean, it, it, it does work for length, but it definitely looks like a very volumizing mascara. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye. What I'm gonna be most curious about is how it holds up and if I get any transfer, because that is the worst so we will see how it lasts in the desert okay, so i got two coats on both eyes i like it so far again biggest test is going to be you know how it wears and i'll have it on all night tonight but i like it i feel like it even gave some curl definitely a lot of volume some length it's very dark okay okay all right i'm going to dip back into the uh face palette yes i am and i'm going to do a little bit of highlighter and then just coming back around to what i was saying earlier and to uh to keep chatting about the subject a little bit one thing that i realized and realized very quickly after announcing my divorce which even prior to that you know there was a certain point where i stopped wearing my ring because it just became too painful and you know i would put it on to film the videos because i knew if i didn't you know people would start to say things and even when people did start to say things and I would see in my comments, why aren't you wearing your rings? What's going on? It, 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 all of those were crushing. <laughs> I'm not really sure why those questions have to be asked. <laughs> it's very confusing to me, just, quite, just straight up. And I'm not trying to be rude when I say that, but straight up it's very odd to me. Um, because I'm like, I don't know what you expect of me. Like if you really expect that I haven't spoken publicly about it, but I'm just gonna like offhand answer a comment i'd like it just i don't get it and so all it's doing is is hurting that person so i i don't know maybe let's not do that it's hurtful it's strange one thing that i noticed very quickly after announcing the divorce and then having to see all this stuff and when i put my tags into youtube and i type samantha march the first thing that comes up samantha march divorce the second thing that comes up, Samantha March Divorce Reddit, specifically. The third thing that pops up, Samantha March Husband. That's disheartening. But one thing, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at this as like a silver lining because I've always been someone who's a people pleaser. I like people to like me. I think I'm a good human. I think I do good things. I think I try hard to do good things and it feels nice when people like you. And like I said, I didn't go into this career thinking it was going to be a career, thinking I was going to then continue to put my life online. That's not how I went into this. So I've always kind of been like, man, I wish I had a thicker skin. I wish things could bounce off me easier. And it's definitely gotten thicker throughout the years. And as online bullying and social media trolling has gotten more and more intense, you know, I do think my skin has gotten thicker, but obviously there's times where I still get upset. But one thing that I've noticed, and I, I don't know if this is just my, my body and my mind going into like a protective mode, but it's all of a sudden, it was like a flip was switched in me and I just couldn't care anymore. 
and I've talked to several of my friends about this because I keep saying, I don't have any feelings. I don't have feelings. And I'm panicking. Like, I'm like, what happened to me? It was like overnight something happened and I'm like, I just don't care anymore. Like I read certain comments and I'm like, I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed that you wrote that about a stranger that you have no idea what they are going through. You have no freaking idea. And you put that out on the internet, I'm embarrassed for you. That's what I think now. Before I used to be like, oh my gosh, and I'm so sad and I'm the, all these things and how can they say that about me? And I would wanna say, no, that's not true. You know, why would you write that about me? Now I'm like, that's embarrassing. I don't do that. <laughs> that's how I feel now. And I'm like freaking out to my friends because I'm like, what's happening to me? I feel like I'm a different person. The term I keep using is unbothered. I'm just unbothered by so much these days because it, it's, it, it was like something flipped in me when I started to see the speculation and the rumors about my divorce. My marriage was always private. Mitch never came in my videos. Mitch, I think, is in two photos on my Instagram feed and I think both of them are family photos with Aries. I didn't speak about my marriage much. You know what was also disturbing was right after I announced my divorce, my top video that was being viewed was a Q&A of like how I met my husband. To me, that was just like, another knife in my back, but <laughs> okay. To have all of this speculation from people who don't know me, don't know Mitch, don't know our marriage, don't know our relationship before our marriage, don't know our relationship after our marriage, to be saying all these things, it just snapped something in me. And all I could think about was it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I say or what I do. It doesn't matter if I'm a good person. It doesn't matter if I try to do good things. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, the people who want to stir the pot, the people who want to say terrible things about people, the people who want to hurt people, the people who want to bring other people down, they don't care that I'm a good person. They don't care about what I've actually been through. It doesn't matter to them. So why would I let their comments bother me? But it really was like something just snapped. And I can't quite decide yet if I'm happy or upset about it. My friends are telling me, you know, you'll go back to being yourself and you're just, you're kind of numb right now and you're not yourself right now and you're, you're dealing with all these different emotions and then I can't decide if I want to go back to being that other person or if I want to have more of this hard shell. I'm not sure yet how I feel about that. What was really sad to me was I got an email from a subscriber, a very long email about how she looked up to me for a long time. She was, uh, she is a wife herself and a mother and she looked up to me for a long time for inspiration and you know loved following my life that way but that i'm a disappointment to her a disappointment to her because i gave up on my marriage i was a disappointment to her because i moved away from a small town into a bigger city and i'm just the typical influencer now she said a lot more things, but that's kind of the gist of it. And as I'm reading this email from someone just berating me during the lowest moment of my life, all I could think of was, you liked me and you related to me when I was deeply unhappy. And I know I got a lot of messages during especially 2020, but even before then of people saying, you know, you seem off, you seem sad, you don't seem like yourself. I got comments more recently from people saying, now when you say, I'm, hey everyone, I'm so excited to do this video, you actually sound, sound excited and for the longest time you didn't. Someone liked me more and related to me more when I was deeply unhappy 
and was trying to push through. And now that I am happy and I'm on a good path and I'm working hard on myself every day and I'm trying to live my best life, now someone doesn't like me or relate to me. And as I see more comments from people saying things like, I liked you better in Iowa, I liked you better when you were married. First of all, do you think that's a reason why someone should stay unhappy? That's odd. But that's the influencer and us being in a zoo and under a microscope and all these things. Like, I, I don't know why people feel the need that our lives have to be based completely on them and what makes them happy. That will never make sense to me. It's never made sense to me. As I read those comments, I couldn't help but be sad because I'm showing a lot of my life in Vegas and I know that it's not for everybody. My sense of fashion has never been for everybody. I got ridiculed in Iowa for the way that I dress. I love living in Vegas that I can wear whatever I want. It's amazing. I know seeing me going out with, you know, the people at the complex and my friends and, you know, people get mad about that and, and the partying. And I also show how hard I'm working. I've had two collabs this year. I launched my own brand this year. I finished writing a book this year. I'm, I'm, tr I'm chasing my dreams. I'm working hard every single day. I'm showing my morning routines and what I'm doing. I'm trying to do the vlogs and you see me at my desk and then the gym all day. <laughs> that is what I do. I'm trying to make what what should be the one of the hardest years of my life i'm trying to make it positive and i'm trying to inspire others that are going through something hard to say like even though yeah there's days where i can't get out of bed and i'm too sad and i'm too overwhelmed that i'm still doing it and it's just so strange to me to then have people say that they don't like me now you liked someone who was so unhappy and you don't like someone who's working her hardest to get some happiness back. That makes me sad because it makes me really wonder what it is that people are relating to. Unhappiness? Settling? giving up a part of yourself I'm not sure what that's about but it genuinely makes me sad not for me not you know people tell me they don't like me every day i literally read comments every single day of why people don't like me and all these other horrible things about me every single day it makes me sad for us as a society that we have now started to place these unrealistic expectations for the past several years on influencers or celebrities or people who like why do we have to chime in on people's babies names who's who, who cares like what why why do we do this as a society it doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense why we thrive on drama and if we can't find drama we'll make it up we'll just straight make it up but i know that i can't live my life for other people and i think i tried for a long time and i got to a point where i was like i i can't keep doing that i can't keep that's just not the way that I'm going to live life anymore. And I just worry of how many people are just gonna keep living their life that way. And then get mad when they see someone that they follow online change course and say, I'm not gonna do that and stand up for themselves and try to make a new future for them. It makes me sad for them. It makes me sad for them and the empath in me that's what makes me so sad. That's just one more thing I wanted to say because I was deeply sad to get that email. Again, not because of me. I can't let, I can't, what? I can't let that change my life. And I know I mentioned in a video once that I truly thought about staying in my marriage because I was so afraid to go through this process in the public eye, which is crazy. But I'm sure there's people that are doing it because the scrutiny and the backlash and the lies and the rumors it can be painful it can be overwhelmingly painful but i'm happy with the decisions that i've made and i'm happy that i'm doing everything that i can to get back to myself to get back to my true self to live my best life to go after my career 
and just be me, authentically me. And the thing is, is if you don't like me because of that, that's okay. That whole saying of like, I'd rather people hate me for me than like me for who I'm not. That's kind of how I feel. There was like an old Samantha who was unhappy and didn't like herself and didn't like her life. And I wanted people to like me so badly. And now there's Samantha 2.0 who's living unbothered. And if you don't like me, then that's okay because I love me and I know I'm doing the right things and I'm on the right path and I know that I'm a good person and that's all that matters. Other people's opinions of me don't matter. And I'm so deeply grateful that I can finally see that. And with that, I think we are done for the deep topics for the day. So I did add some lip liner. I would used the Charlotte Tilbury Love Trap and then Charlotte did send over her new, uh, what was this called? The Super Nudes line. So I have four different lipsticks. So this one here is Cover Star. Ooh. I like the looks of that. This next one is Runway Royalty. Third one is Supermodel. And lastly, we have Catwalking. But I love them all. Great, okay, good. So let's pick a shade. I'm gonna do actually the lightest one here. This one was in Cover Star. It's kind of more of this brown nude. The eyes are a little bit more the star of the show. I kind of want to do something just pretty nude on the lips. Mm, that is beautiful. So this one feels more like the kissing formula versus the matte formula. It says it on the boxes. So catwalking is a matte revolution. Uh, cover star says matte revolution. Uh, matte revolution is supermodel. So the only one in kissing is runway runway royalty. Otherwise, they're the matte. So, okay, I thought it felt a little bit more like the kissing formula, but I prefer the matte revolution. So this makes me This makes me very happy. Like I said, I think I'm gonna do some lip swatches over on my Instagram If you'd want to check that out, I'll probably do a little reel But those are the four new Charlotte lipsticks. So after that, this is the final look today So I was definitely skeptical skeptical about that lawless foundation But the more I wear it the more I actually kind of am enjoying it. So I always review everything that I've been trying out and I feel like I'm gonna be very curious of to what my final thoughts are on this foundation. It is still a little bit light, but I think that we made it work. I do like the setting spray so far from Lawless also. The Charlotte palette, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I liked the bronzer the most out of here, but the shades were just so light. I feel like it's kind of hard to pick them up. Um, I'm going to try them with different brushes because, you know, that can be a thing too. Maybe some more dense brushes might help to pick some of these up. Like the contour was really hard to come through. The blush is pretty, but I don't know. It's almost like a little bit too metallic-y for my taste. And the highlight, Charlotte's highlights don't usually blow me away, but I don't know, kind of on the fence about this one the lip products i think i'm really going to enjoy but you know just trying one for the first time the natasha palette i'm just yeah diamond love i'm gonna be wearing this palette forever i love the way that the eyes came out like if you have green eyes you should definitely use these colors because this is freaking beautiful the rare beauty mascara i think is pretty definitely curious to see how it holds up throughout the day I think that was everything new that I tried in this video. Um, I just really wanted to sit down, play with some makeup, kind of give a little update of you know why I took some time off and how I'm doing and some of the hardships. Um, I think I'm gonna do some more videos like this over the next few months, any time that I feel very strongly to sit down to share another piece about this um, and what I'm experiencing and what I'm going through because I do have a platform and I do have a voice and I know I have gotten so many messages from people since the day that I announced my divorce um, saying that I am inspiring you and helping you through your own situation and that definitely means a lot to me. I understand that on the flip side comes a lot of hardships, a lot of scrutiny, a lot of living my life under the microscope which is very challenging especially when something is so raw. You're really going through something in that moment. It is so challenging and it's another reason why I wanted to make this video because I, you know, of course I unfortunately don't think something like cyberbullying, bullying in general, I don't think that's ever going to go away, but 
it doesn't mean that I can't speak up about it and it doesn't mean that I can't try to change people's minds to understand how badly and how deeply you can be hurting people when they are already suffering. <laughs> and maybe I could convince one or two people to not have to chime in on someone's personal life when you know how badly that they are hurting. So I appreciate you listening. I'm sure this video is gonna be a little bit all over the place and probably hard to edit, but some of the topics are still hard for me to talk about no matter how much of a harder shell I feel like I'm getting. Sometimes they're still just hard to talk about, but uh, I'm glad that I was able to take a little bit of a mental health break. I spent a full two days in bed not on the internet, not on my phone, not on the computer. One day I slept the entire day and night. And I'm glad that I was able to take that break and come back and I'm excited to film again. I'm excited to interact with you in the comments again and to just get back to it and, and keep chasing after my goals, keep chasing after my dreams and hopefully keep inspiring some of you that no matter what you're going through, you know, there can always be light on the other side. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll link everything that I tried down below. If you enjoyed it, I would love if you gave this video a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go and I'll see you in my next video.